Okay, so I'd say this is a little bit of a, a dream amp in some ways for me. I'm not the sort of person that can necessarily see myself spending this kind of money on an amp, but this is the Two Rock TS1. We'll get into some of the details about this amp, but I was very generously offered to check out this amp by Chris from up the road, and he's got my PRS Silver Sky and a K-Line at the moment, so we just got kind of met up today for a coffee and a stroll, and um, he's very kindly let me have a go on his Two Rock TS1. This is a version one, serial number 29, so quite an early TS1, I think. Uh, let's see how it sounds. This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. Thank you. 
I'm going to plug into our normal channel. I'm going to have it on the rock mode. I think that's what people most commonly use. This has actually got a Celestian, the red back in there, which I've been wanting to check out one of these speakers for a while because it's actually what Dumble was using most recently, I think, from what I've read online. He used to use Altex and then EVM 12s and then Celestian red backs apparently was what he would use. So uh, we've got the master here. I'm gonna maybe take it down to two just to start off with. Um, bright is off, mid is off. The volume is at just over five and treble about four, mids at about four, bass at about five. Sorry, the master's at about two, the presence is about three. So that for me is probably still a bit too much going on volume wise at home. So immediately, like, tone-wise, it's quite pleasing. But it's very kind of thumpy, um, and if... It's kind of giving you back exactly what you put in, like quite a stark kind of. That's kind of the clean channel right now. Now, what I'm interested in really here, I've got the foot switch here, which has lead and bypass. So first of all, I guess for me, I might dial the presence back a bit, given that I'm playing with single chords. Yeah, that's really nice. Let's take the master back a bit. One of the cool things with the Dumble style amp really is that you don't tend to lose too much if you take the master down. Let's take the master down even more. Turn on the mid. So we got a volume there at like seven. So yes, very much a clean machine here with this guitar anyway, if I take it all the way up to eight. Yeah, still wants to be clean with this Strat. Right, now let's jump over to the channel of truth, the lead channel. Now I'm interested particularly here, I'm gonna do a comparison video with this TS1 lead channel and the PRS MT100 because I think this is kind of one of those examples of like a an idealized Dumble lead channel and let's see how it compares with the MT100 which was based on Mark Tremonti's actual real one that's a video for another day but here's so let's take the ratio up so we're getting some pretty chewy kind of
So that's with the mids on. Taking the volume up to five on the input. Scoop the mids a bit. If we start to crank the ratio, so now up to about seven, no, eight. So it's keeping quite a lot of seems to me to be one of the amps that listen to how quiet it is by the way that's a good thing um that gets more towards that kind of farty fuzzy Let's try the FET input. So this now puts a boost in front of that. So here I'm boosting the ratio higher, keeping the level a bit higher. We take the level higher, bring the ratio down. So there. mids back up So that's FET input, normal input. I think there are a bunch of people out there that would not get along really with that Dumble style drive. I think it's a really, really particular sort of sound, which to, to me, there's going to be a bunch of people, who are, to me, myself included, that I feel like something more Marshall voiced. <laughs> Take that level down. Mm -hmm. 
take the ratio up. <laughs> totally get why um, folks might you know struggle with this idea of like the dumbbell sound because to me these drive channels are particularly versatile in some ways and in, in other ways they're kind of quite stiff um, is, is the way that I would say obviously you're hearing them without reverb and delay and that's part of it and I think they maintain a lot of dynamics even though it's like quite a sort of fuzzy sound quite mid forward um, but I can see why this might not be the ideal amp for everyone and you know you think people like try like a VHTD50 or a Cherrytone OTS50 and they I think tend to think well something's maybe not right with those amplifiers like are they not as good as say like a 2Rock and this is the TS1 um, I think maybe it is just the case that, that there are drive channels out there that suit players better than the kind of dumbbell style, right? Um, I think that's the case for me, you know, I think of it as something like a Mesa Boogie Mark drive where it, it doesn't necessarily get you exactly to where you think it should. Um, there's some coaxing that needs going on but a legendary amp I'm going to now record the intro and as I say I'm going to do a comparison with the MT100 and uh, I'll, I'll probably stick something in the loop as well thank you so much to Chris for letting me check this out I'm going to play this a bunch more over the next few days and see what we can get out of this thing but yeah immediate kind of response is something like what I might have had with the VHT D50 and stuff like that where it's like can you really get the most out of this at a bedroom volume probably not uh, my mic is struggling with the volumes that it's putting out um, and does it immediately get me into that territory where I'm like this is my dumbbell tone I don't necessarily think so so let me know your thoughts in the comments loads of people really use these for clean stuff like Mick from that pedal show uh, Chris whose amp this belongs to uses it really as a clean pedal platform or like towards edge of breakup which it does fantastically as well as well but for me what i'm interested in more so is the drive side of this and yeah i think that's the bit where it's a little bit more complex in some ways <laughs> 